Now, this scripture is very, very common, and sometimes we use it so much to introduce a speaker. But when you dig a little bit deeper into the meaning of this scripture here, what Jesus was actually talking about is not just the written word of God, but it's the word that actually comes from the mouth of God. Amen. Because if you go back a couple of days before, Jesus Christ had been baptized. Amen. And the Bible says that the heavens opened and God himself said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. So even though he was hungry, even though he was tired, even though the devil could have been mocking him, but one thing, one thing that encouraged Jesus Christ in the wilderness was the word that he heard when he was baptized to say that, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. So he didn't have to turn the rocks into bread to confirm or to validate the fact that he is a child of God. Amen. Amen. Or he is the son of God. Why am I saying this? Because this letter here, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now from the time that I joined Ford in faith, at one of the deeper lives it was explained that from 1975 up to now, 1975 was the first year that the 10 days letter was ever written, amen. And from that time, God has been faithful to the servant of God and to this ministry. Because in every year, he has given a word by which we can live by, amen. So man shall not live by bread alone. So you cannot underestimate the words that have been put in here. Those who have taken heed to these words, those who have taken heed to the letters that have come many years that have gone by, they have been safe, they have been protected, they have prepared themselves. Droughts have come, adversities have come, but they've been able to protect themselves because they have been ready. So this letter is not just a cliche, it's not just something that we just do. It's not just something to decorate the 10 days. It's not something to just say we need to do this. It's not just part of the program. But man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. And so allow me now to read just a small portion in paragraph number three of this letter. It says the year 2020 is different from all other years. Now there is, this is where my heart started beating. Because I can't turn to my neighbor and ask him, what is the meaning of this? Because my neighbor has never experienced it. I can't ask anybody because it is a different year. You have got no reference upon it. You cannot say maybe this happened in 19 something or this happened in 1982. No, because there has been no other year like this year. There is no other year than this year. It says, we need to be strong as never before. Not like a strong as five years ago, no. It says, strong as never before. No point of reference. Because there are things in the spiritual world that I cannot be able to explain. That's even more troublesome. It's almost getting deeper and deeper. I was laughing with Elder Prosper yesterday. Many years we have been excited with the 10 days. But this day, every day you read it, you read it, it's all, you, you tremble. You tremble. It says because there are things in the spiritual world that I cannot be able to explain. Except that I encourage everyone to make sure that your relationship with God is all right. I'm not going to proceed further because there's so much in this letter. This letter has got different segments. It addresses the individuals. Then it commands the church to take a position. Then it commands us towards the end and says, continue in the teaching of forward in faith. And I'm sure people are going to touch on different aspects. But I just want to touch on these few lines that I have read out here. Amen. There is a generation in the Bible that went and they experienced what their forefathers had never experienced before. They went through things that there was no point of reference. When the children of Israel went into captivity in Babylon, they had no point of reference. 
the only thing that they had, they had the letter that came from Jeremiah. Jeremiah had prophesied. And in Jeremiah chapter 16, there's an interesting part of scripture. Jeremiah 16 verse 14. I'm not going to open it, but I just want you at your given time to open it. But the Lord says, he says, I will no longer be known as the God who took you out of Egypt. But I will be now known as the God who brought you from the northern kingdom. Why? Because God was going to do a new thing. The letter says this is going to be a year like no other year. You see, they knew about the Red Sea Party. They knew about manna in the wilderness. They knew about David killing a lion. But they had never yet experienced when a king says, interpret for me this dream, I will not tell you this dream. Joseph at least was told the dream. But now to Daniel, he says that you have to tell me the dream, and then you have to interpret the dream. Something that he had no reference on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into a furnace that was heated up seven times over. We had never heard of it in the history. Of Israel. Amen. 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 Daniel was thrown into a den of lions and he spent a night in the den of lions. Where could he get a reference? How do you deal with staying in a den of lions? There was no reference. What do you do? Daniel's name was changed. Take stripped of your identity. In Egypt, they were known as the Hebrews. Their identity was not taken. Yeah. Wow. But in Babylon, they were stripped of their identity. Wow. Amen. Wow. So how do we proceed in this year? When the servant of God is saying that it is a year like no other, you have got no idea what is going to happen. Yeah. And then he says that you need to be strong. Yeah. Wow. You need Amen. to be strong. Amen. You see, in this year, I was looking at the children of Israel going into, into Babylon. And it boils down to one thing, that they ended up seeking God. The way Daniel was seeking God was in an unusual manner. The way Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego began to have confidence. He says that we may perish, but we're not going to bow down to this image. So, so tonight, I want to try and stay you up to seek God. If, if there's anything that I can do tonight, is to try and provoke you to seek God like you have never sought Him before. Let's go to Second Chronicles. Chapter 25. 2 Chronicles 25. And we're going to read from verse 1. Second Chronicles 25. Verse 1. Amaziah, excuse my pronunciation was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehodan of Jerusalem. Now listen to verse 2. And he did what was right in the sight of God, but not with a loyal heart. He did what was right in the sight of God, but he didn't have a loyal heart. No. You can be in hosting. It's good in the house, in, in the eyes of God. For you to host, to bring the water for the servant of God, to minister to the servant of God, to do everything for the servant of God, to run around in the house of God, doing everything, but you don't have a loyal heart. I'm not talking about a clean heart. Uh -huh. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. A loyal heart Amen. to God. Yes. You can expend yourselves in 10 days. Mm -hmm. You can do all the gymnastics. You can, you can, you can burp in the tongues like we've never heard before. Mm -hmm. Because Amaziah did things that were good.
good in the sight of God. Now, remember, the scripture did not say he pleased God. Yeah. It says he did things that were right in the sight of God. It is right for you to come to prayer. It is right for you to give your tithe. It is right for you to do all those things. But your heart is not loyal to God. How can we go on praying until you deal with with this unloyalty. It's very possible. Here I am standing as the administrator, yes, but my heart may not be loyal to God. Holding a position, but not loyal to God. So what does it mean to be not to have a loyal heart? You see, loyalty demands uncompromising Dedication. Okay. Mm. Loyalty. When, when, when you talk about a person being loyal to me, yeah. it's a person who is, who defend me at all costs. Yeah. Me as a human being. Yeah. Now, when you are talking about being loyal to God, yeah. it means that you are willing for your reputation out in the world to be stripped down because you want to obey God. Wow. Yeah. There are people here amongst us. Yeah. Who have chosen to come in the house of God, no. doing things in the house, but you're not, your heart is not loyal. Mm. Mm. Forget about being loyal to Ford in faith, but being loyal to God. Yes. There are people in our midst here. Sometimes they criticize the church. Mm. Criticize it. You are here. Your heart is not loyal. Mm. Because who is the head of, of the church? Jesus Christ. Yeah. You are not loyal to him. This way there's trouble with me for a couple of days. Being loyal to God. Do you know that I can occupy a position as an elder? I can do just enough to be classified as an elder, but not enough to be classified as ineffective. They're not loyal. You see, enough to tick the register. Just enough to tick the register. You see the multitude. We have never seen this multitude on a Thursday prayer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have never seen this multitude. <laughs> and as the ten, as the pressure of the ten days keeps going, I guarantee you the numbers are going to increase. But after the ten days, the majority will disappear. Why? Because your loyalty is not to God. Yeah. You have come to tick the ten days. Yeah. To tick it. Yeah. You see, when, 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 I, when I came to forward in faith, I was told in my first ten days, I was told, young man, during these ten days, during these ten days, there's the one thing that you must get. You must meet God. Yeah. You must have an encounter with God. Now, the thing is this. You see, during the 10 days, you have to get to a time. You know, there are some things that you are ashamed to say in front. To go in, you have to go in the corner to say, Father, I don't find any more pleasure in the house of God. I uh, know you, you don't want to agree. Because sometimes you are feeling, ah, I should just sit at home. Your pleasure is no longer in that. And you have to confess to God and say, God, rekindle mm. my love for you. Mm. Rekindle my love for you. Mm. When David had sinned, he said, renew the right spirit in me. Mm. Why? So that I may teach transgressors mm. your ways. Mm. That I may be able to stand here and mm. actually teach mm. transgressors your ways. I was told young men during the 10 days, don't play. You mm. must Encounter God, yeah. not the program. Yeah. Encounter yeah. God. Yeah. So today I want to steer you up. Yeah. If the Lord tarries at some stage, maybe we might pray a little. Yeah. Uh, we need to. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's continue preaching. Yeah. So loyalty. Wow. There are some now who are beginning to debate. The doctrine of uh, tithing. Uh, our father in the letter says, continue the teaching of God in faith. Yes. Now, right. my brother and my sister, 
it's not wrong for you to ask God to explain to you so that you understand this principle of tithing. Why? In the book of Daniel, the Bible says a voice came from heaven Amen. while Daniel was praying and he said, make him understand. Amen. So it is not wrong for you to pray to God and say, God, help me to understand this issue. You have to call upon God. It's not just about... No, no, no. You have to... Each one of us, we have got some issues. You've got some things that are troubling you. Because our father says, make sure your relationship is right. Do you want tithing to hinder you from going to heaven? Why? Jesus. Jesus. And the tithe is given here. It's not even going to be in heaven. It's here. You give it here. The thing that you do here causes you not to enter heaven. Ask God to help you to understand. Amen. 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 His heart was not loyal. My question to you is, is your heart loyal? You are in hosting. Everyone, everyone, everyone always abuses praise and worship. So today, we will leave praise and worship. We hear the sound and they'll say, yes. Thank you. You are in hosting. In hosting. And maybe you don't agree with the type of water. And then you begin to criticize your leader. And the Roman says, every leader comes from God. Who are you loyal to? Today we were discussing with my wife and, and, and God was, um, my wife was saying, God is very serious. Eh? He, he, he opened the ground and thousands of people went in. Yeah. Not just people, their goats, their tents, and they, because he was angry and he closed. Right. Yeah. Now Miriam was called a prophetess, uh -huh. but because Miriam lifted her voice against the servant of God, uh -huh. she had to stay outside the camp for seven days. Uh -huh. When Aaron took up his effort, God had judged him, uh -huh. and he had to die at that particular time. Uh -huh. Yet we open our mouths to criticize the leaders. Yeah. Is your heart loyal? You see, this day, it's an unusual year. Do you, do you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging everyone. When our father was talking about this letter, his emphasis was saying, you need to be right with your God. You need to be right with your God. You need to be right with your God. Right right Just a word. Just a word. Do you know that criticizing your deacon, forget about the pastor, your deacon. Amen. Criticizing your deacon. Mm. We all do it. Mm. So when we are going to pray after this, you know, we are going to cry to God Amen. to help us. Amen. Because the Amen. aim of 10 days is for God to hear your prayer. Amen. If you have done it, you did it maybe out of ignorance or whatever the case may be, but now the Holy Spirit has brought conviction. And it's time that we must repent. This is how I was taught 10 days. Uh, I felt so dirty on the first day, I didn't know whether I was a Christian or not. Uh, but it was because the word of God was there, so that I can run this year in a manner that I will not be hindered. Uh, uh, is your heart loyal to God? Uh, that is my question to you. Uh, is your heart loyal to God? Amen. Now let's go to a scripture we love. Let's go to the one that we love. Second Chronicles 16. This one. Second Chronicles 16. Reading from verse 9. And the word of the Lord said, Hear this. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro, throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. It's important that this year God shows himself strong to you because
this, the way that has come is that we need to be strong. Yeah. We may face adversity, we may face certain things that requires the strength, but let's finish the scripture now. It says that to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. God is only going to show himself strong, Amen. provided you are loyal to him. Not to me, not to any, not to your peers, not to your group, but if you are loyal to him. Amen. So the question that you have to ask yourself, are you loyal to him? Some Amen. people now, they are sitting on their gifts because they were offended in the house of God. They don't want to do anything in the house of God now anymore. It says, no, I don't, I'm avoiding things. The house of God is God's house. Amen. If you're going to be loyal to him, you have to serve him. Amen. You are not depriving forward in faith of the gift. Amen. You're not depriving to buy wine or JJ of the gift. Yeah. You are depriving God of the gift that he has given you. So you are not standing resolute. You are not defending everything. Wow. So your heart is not loyal. Wow. Your heart is not loyal. Uh, and you need to ask your, yourself, you need to get to a point where you say, am I truly, truly loyal? Uh, mm. Are you truly, truly loyal to him? Uh, so, amen. let's get to, as we come to almost our conclusion, we want to pray a little. Amen. We want to pray a little. Amen. Let's go to Exodus 33. I want to, to encourage you to seek God through this scripture, Exodus 33. I've read this scripture many, many a times, and I was always trying to understand what was actually going on here. And the Bible says in Exodus 33, verse 7, it says, Moses took his tent. Can I use an example, sir? Can you come and stand here? As we are reading the word, it says, Moses took his tent. So this is the tent of Moses. And pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp. So Moses pitched his tent here. Far from the camp. Wow. And called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle. Wow. Right? They went out to the tabernacle. Wow. Of meeting, which was outside the camp. So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose right now remember moses they said anybody who wants to seek god where must you go to the tabernacle right everybody who wants to have an encounter with god where must you go to the tabernacle so it was whenever moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door, not there, at his tent door, and watched Moses. Huh? But Moses said, if you want to have an encounter, you go, you go there. They just stood up and they watched Moses <laughs> going there. Moses, the man of God, said, if you want to see God, go away to the tabernacle. What did they do? They stood up. What did they do? They watched. And Moses went. We want to stay each other to seek God. Amen. Uh -huh. Let's continue. Amen. Listen what happened. And watched Moses Amen. until he had gone to the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle Amen. that the pillar of cloud descended. They were not even intrigued that let us also go get glory. They were not even persuaded to say, let us go and seek that glory. Amen. Moses said, if you want to see God, where do you go? What did they do? They stood up and they watched. Uh -huh. Let's continue it. It says, And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. They were not even intrigued. 
Wow. They were not even curious. Wow. Wow. <laughs> All the people saw the pillar of cloud, not even motivated to say, my brother and my sister, let us also go and try and get some of this glory. Wow. No, they stood up wow. in their houses and they watched. Wow. While others are going to pray and they watch. Wow. While the prayer convention is coming and they watch. Wow. While others are expending themselves and they watch. Wow. Wow. All the people saw the pillar of wow. cloud standing at the tabernacle door. Wow. And all the people rose and worshipped. Each man in this tent, I know I'll worship here. Uh -huh. I'll worship you here. Yeah. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp. But listen here. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Why didn't he leave? What did Joshua see in that tabernacle? The scripture is silent. Can you allow me to make a theological assumption? Our VP is there. You correct me in school. <laughs> a theological assumption. I may get my assignments wrong, but allow me here. Just a theological assumption. I believe Joshua encountered God in that tent. I believe Joshua met God. Why? Because Joshua came with a different report. He saw what he had never seen before. In the promised land, he saw giants. He saw fortified cities. He saw things that baffled his mind. But his testimony was different. This year is going to be a different year. But you have to have an encounter with God that you are able to stand. Yes. You have to be able to have an encounter with God that you can stand. Amen. 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 Why are those women sitting down day and night? I'm not advocating for day and night, but there's something that they're seeking. Why are these? No, you know, if your prayer is just this one, seven to ten, <coughs> only seven to ten, finished. You are like those people who stood up and they watch. Ah, why is it that this one is this one glory? And they're not even intrigued to say, Moses, can I come with you? At least the scripture would have said, No, 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 you're not allowed. We know on that mountain they were not allowed to ascend. In the tabernacle, this is Moses who never said, I will take my tent and I'm going to make a place. What am I trying to say here? Seeking God is not going to be easy. It was far from the camp, meaning to say it was uncomfortable. This is not the time for you to become uncomfortable. This is the time for you to go to heights that you have never been. Yes. To go to depths that you have never been. Amen. Because the year we do not know what the year holds. That's right. yeah. Who else went to the tabernacle, to the tent of meeting? After this we will rise and then we will start, we'll start praying. There's another man I will show you. Second Chronicles chapter one. Second Chronicles chapter one. Second Chronicles chapter one. Verse three. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tabernacle of meeting with God was there which Moses the servant of the Lord had made in the wilderness. Do you remember that tabernacle? Yeah. That is the one that Moses went to. And after he had prayed in the first seven, guess what happens? The Lord comes to Solomon. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what shall I give you? After he had sought the Lord. Amen. My encouragement to you, we want to seek the face of God. Amen. We want to draw near to God. Amen. The Bible encourages that if we draw near, he shall draw near to us. Amen. In the book of Acts, Amen. when Paul is now in Athens, he now begins to talk about that 
people have been given different places to live. Why have we been given those places to live? That we may seek the Lord. And the Bible says that if we shall grope for Him. To grope means to be desperate. It's like looking for something in the dark. You don't know exactly what you are looking for. But you know you are looking for something. And Paul goes on to say that the Lord is not far. The Lord is not far. In, our, in the letter here it says that there are periods of spiritual dryness that are going to come. How, how are you going to endure? that spiritual drive if you don't have an encounter with God. Yeah. So my brothers and my sisters, I'm calling now the praise and worship to come and help me. My brothers and my sisters, this is the time that we now need to begin to expand ourselves. You cannot just do the ordinary thing. These three hours that we're having here is just the minimum. You need to have your tabernacle of meeting Amen. where you are not going to leave until you meet God. Yeah. Until you meet God. Hallelujah. I cannot tell you anything because I have not experienced what, what is going to happen in 2020. Yeah. But we need to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to seek the Lord. Amen. 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 The, book, the word of God says in the book of Jude, Build yourself up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Ghost. So we want to get into a time when we now want to begin to build ourselves. We have got about 25 minutes, but we want to build ourselves in our most holy faith. Amen. We want to become strong. We want to become strong. Paul says to the church of Ephesians, he says that I desire that your inner man may be strengthened with the might. Amen. So we want to be strong. We want to be strong. We want to have a loyal heart to God. Uncompromising faith to God. I'll just ask the praise and worship to just sing for us a worship song. We want to get into, you know, that time of seeking, drawing near to God. Amen. We are desperate for God. Amen. We need God. Amen. Amen.